Hi, as part of my blog, I want to show you how to make a bias tube. A lot of quilters get very confused with the whole process. This is an 8 by 8 inch square. I'm just doing a miniature so I can help you learn how to do this. Otherwise, if I had an 18 by an 18 inch square, I would get over four and a half yards of bias binding. That's a lot of binding from an 18 inch square. So for purposes of this video, we're going to do a miniature. You start out with a square whatever dimension you have. Once you have that square, then you would place a ruler from corner to corner, because you're going to cut this on the diagonal. With your rotary cutter, you would just slice this straight down. Not like what I'm doing, but um, just cut it right down. When you're finished, you'll have two pieces of fabric cut on the diagonal. And of course, the right side would be facing you, right sides up. And then you would take the bottom right hand piece, flip it up on top of the upper piece, and have those two points meet. Now for purposes, for clarification, I'm going to use a different color for the bottom piece. Once again, bring the bottom right hand up to the top. And then you would just take it, make sure that those two points meet one another, and you're going to take a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across. Just like this. Quarter inch seam allowance. When you're finished with that, go and press the seam open. That seam really needs to be wide open. And I have a sample here to show you what that looks like. Here's the open seam. Don't worry about all these little doggy ears on the top or on the bottom. That's going to be taken care of later. Once you have your, your first seam stitched, then you're going to take and you're going to mark what you want, however wide you want your bias binding. I always make mine about an inch, I mean two inches to two and a quarter inches. But for the purposes of this video, I'm only going to put an inch down. So I put my ruler down, make sure that it lines up with the bottom edge of the triangle, and then I'm going to go right across, and yes, I do use a ballpoint pen even on real binding um, because I'm going to be cutting on that line. Once I have the first line drawn, I just move it up and again, align up the one inch line here and then draw all the way across. If I had a very large piece of fabric, I probably would have to slide my ruler and then continue marking. Once everything is marked, then you would take <coughs> and place your ruler down again, only this time at the quarter inch mark or line on the side here. So you want to intersect all those lines that you've drawn, you want to intersect at a quarter inch. And do that also on this side. Both sides need to be done, quarter inch marking. You might not be able to see that too well in the red, but I know you can in the yellow. After you do that, then you take your rotary cutter, and cut about three inches into the first line that you drew and kind of disregard the fact that this is there. There's a reason for that. Now we need to take side A and stitch it to side B. This is where all the problems come in for the quilters. Side A needs to be stitched to side B. I'm going to turn this over so that we have right side up facing us. Side A needs to go to side B. One of the things I've implanted in my head is point to seam, point to seam. And that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the point and bring it up to the seam. Do you see how messy all this gets now? And this is where quilters just say, I give up. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Point to seam. Then you're going to take a pin and remember those little quarter inch markings? Put the pin right into where the markings intersect one another. And then find the same marking on the other side, on the other triangle, the red one in this case. And then you're going to place the pin. And what I do is I line up those two fabrics, push the pin straight through, give a little tug on it to make sure that those Two intersections are snug. 
Now, some quilters are going to say, okay, now I have to pin it, and they'll pin it like this. If you do that without removing the pin completely, you're going to have this front fabric slightly up away from the back fabric. So remove the pin and then just pin it back like this. And then you're going to take another pin and again the same thing. Where the two lines intersect, just simply push the pin in and then find the lines that intersect on the back fabric, put the pin in, and then again snug up those two fabrics, pull the pin so that those two intersections are working, pull the pin out, and then pin it. Now if somehow you made a mistake or the ruler slipped and you have a gap between these two fabrics, you can ease that in and it'll stitch just very nicely. Once you have all of those pinned, you're going to look at it and say, oh my, I must have made a mistake. Look at this sticking out. Don't worry about that because we disregarded the fact that this was not here. But as long as you did the point to seam, you'll be fine. Once you have all of this done, you're going to stitch quarter inch seam allowance all the way across. And here we have our quarter inch seam allowance stitched all the way across. Now you do need to press the seam open. And I have not done it on this model, but I would go and press the seam wide open. And as you can see, you now have these lines that go around and around. So with scissors, if I'm cutting this, I continue where I made my first cut and I will cut around and around. And as I go, notice how I keep oh, going around and come to the end and I have a little bit of fabric here that I'm going to eventually cut off and just um, throw away. So that's how you make a bias tube. I also have written instructions on my blog and you can look at the video a number of times and then you can print out the instructions. Thanks.